Now to the uncertainty surrounding the future of Manchester United. The share price crashed by more than 18% yesterday following reports the Glazers were going to take the club off the market. More than half a billion pounds was wiped off the club's value in just one day. Well, let's now speak live to financial expert Kieran Maguire who can help us unpick this. Uh, Kieran, good afternoon to you. Good to speak to you. Uh, I mean, it really was an incredible crash on the stock market yesterday. Were you surprised it dropped by so much? Not necessarily. If we take a look at where the Manchester United share price was, it was being propped up to a degree by speculators who thought that there would be a full sale and therefore they'd be able to sell Manchester United shares for probably somewhere in the region of $27 to $30. So, so that was the reason why it was so high. The story which came out over the course of the weekend indicated that the Glazers were having second thoughts and therefore people started trying to sell their shares because they, they don't want to hold them on a long term basis if there's no prospect of a deal. And we know the Glazers only invested around 240 million, I say only 240 million of their own money to buy United. Do you understand how on earth they can be turning down five billion? Well, I think there's there's a couple of issues. They, they've seen uh, Barcelona and how Barcelona have been selling off slices of the club and the amount of money that's been generated for that. And, and perhaps they've re redone their calculations. I think they're confident that future broadcasting rights are going to rise. Uh, and with the advent of artificial intelligence and VR, there, there's prospects for new ways of delivering content to Manchester United's global fan base. They seem convinced that the technology is going to be there, but I'm not sure that everybody else shares those views. Yeah, do you think it is a realistic prospect, these kind of figures that are being put around? I mean, that leaked report says United could be worth something like seven to ten billion pounds by 2025. Do you think that is a realistic prospect? It's, it's unrealistic at present. If we take a look at the history of Manchester United under the Glazer ownership, the club's actually lost money in the first 18 years, so it wouldn't need a significant turnaround. But Newcastle United was sold less than two years ago for £300 million. So to say that Manchester United is worth more than 30 times the value of Newcastle United does seem unrealistic. But American owners in particular do seem very confident that the rest of the market is substantially undervaluing football clubs and, and uh, it, uh, compared to American sports franchises, that they're still relatively cheap. And do you think there is a bit of game playing here? I mean, could these reports be designed to get more money uh, off, off the prospective buyer, Sheikh Jassim and Jim Ratcliffe? Or, or is that a bit of a dangerous game to be playing if they are indeed doing that? I think that would be very dangerous. If, if you take a look at the New York Stock Exchange rules, uh, that could be deemed to be inappropriate behaviour and there could be consequences if senior people at the club were connected with these reports. And there's no evidence, by the way, to support that. So I, I don't think so. I think the, the, the prospective owners in, in the same shape of Jim Ratcliffe and uh, Sheikh Jazim, um, they feel that they've put in fair offers. They've not heard anything from Manchester United or the Rain Group. I think there's a sense of frustration. They've spent an awful lot of money on accountants and lawyers and professional fees, and they're not getting an answer. Kieran, if you can, just talk us through how much the Glazer ownership has actually cost Manchester United. Well, I think if we if we look at a variety of ways that the Glazer family have taken money out of the club, first of all, there was the the listing in uh, in 2011, 2012, where I think they took out substantial amounts. Um, we've also had dividends which have been paid by the club since uh, 2016. Those have totaled around about £160 million, of which a significant proportion has gone to the Glazer family. Some of the Glazer children have sold shares, and that's brought in, again, a nine-figure sum. So, so overall, we're probably talking somewhere in the region of four to £500 million. To your knowledge, are there any other clubs that are run using a similar model? Well, there are a few clubs, the likes of Juventus and Borussia Dortmund, who are listed on stock exchanges, and therefore you, you can buy and sell shares. You can, in theory, put in a bid for the club. But none of those clubs have a history of paying out dividends to the owners um, and for money to be distributed in such a manner. So Manchester United's model is unique. The, all of the other clubs in the Premier League are, are held privately, and, and none of them pay dividends to owners. 
And we know that Eric Ten Hag's spending has been cut due to financial fair play restrictions. It seems like other clubs managed to find a way around FFP. Why is it that United don't seem to be able to? Well, I think Manchester United have spent an awful lot of money in a competitive amount compared to what they would consider to be their peer group. I think the downside, as far as Manchester United are concerned, is their inability to convert players into substantial amounts of money from sales. If we take a look at the period since Sir Alex Ferguson uh, retired, Manchester United have generated £450 million uh, in, in player sales, and that's over, what, 11, 12 years, whereas Chelsea have, have generated almost as three times as much, £800 million more. Now, that £800 million goes into Chelsea's transfer budget, and also because of the way that the accounting is dealt with, if you sell a player, you get an immediate gain going into the accounts, whereas if you buy a player, the, the pain of buying the player is, is spread over the life of the contract. So Chelsea have, have utilised that, whereas Manchester United, because they're not selling players, in particular they're not generating money from youth team and academy players, but they're fallen significantly behind. Kieran, really interesting stuff. We appreciate your insight. Thank you so much for joining us. Thank you.